Okay, so for this tutorial, what we're going to be looking at is uh, generating a uh, CNC toolpath for Mastercam uh, for both 3D contours, um, 2D contours, and then also setting some up uh, stuff up for surfacing if uh, we wanted to do that as well. Uh, okay, so the first thing we want to do is we need to obviously design our geometry. Uh, this is a table. Uh, there's actually some pictures of this on some of the other videos that I used for some of the Photoshop stuff. Um, where I wrote an attraction and repulsion script and then utilize that to program the surface that uh, acts like water. Uh, but uh, so essentially what that does is that gives us um, the, probably the most complex set of geometry that we're going to have. We have a set of 3D contours that are all moving in the X, Y, and Z uh, as they move along. Uh, we have some surface pattern surfaces here where we're actually looking and we can see uh, that we can use as as guides if we want to do some surfacing pads. Uh, and then we have some uh, also some of these contours. We also have boundary edges that we can use to start to cut out um, some basic 2D cutting. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we need to do uh, is we need to understand uh, how the machine works. Uh, it's a three axis mill uh, and so we need to um, understand that basically is a Cartesian coordinate system that uh, the machine operates in to translate location. So uh, it moves on based on a series of coordinates that are given uh, by the machines itself, or to the machine, sorry. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving it uh, coordinates relative to space. Now uh, all of the coordinates exist in quadrant one, uh, which is to say they're all positive, positive, positive in X, Y, and Z. Uh, and so we first thing we need to do is when we look at that we need to start to set up our space and locate our geometry relative to that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set up a little framework here. Uh, so we go to the 0, 0, 0 coordinate. Um, the bed that I'm going to be working on here is uh, 10 feet by uh, 5 feet. Okay, and I'm working in inches in here so that's 120 inches by 60 inches. Uh, and so that's the full operating size that I have to work with. Uh, and this is a thermwood machine. Uh, what we'd like to do though is um, we generally like to set this up so that we can uh, lo locate our geometry very specifically because that edge tends to float. Uh, even though that's the working space, there's not a hard edge there. Uh, so what we do is we build an offset. Um, and this varies, it's usually written on the machine uh, or shared. Uh, but we have a three inch offset that we set on this. So I go three inches, and I click OK. So now that uh, I've reduced our bed size, but you can see our parts will still comfortably fit on here. A four by eight sheet will still comfortably fit on here. Uh, so we, we haven't uh, really locked ourselves in. Uh, and so this will be, a, this is usually the general setup here. So we can go ahead and lock this. And we can start to locate our geometry in that space. Um, so for this tabletop here, uh, I'm going to get some layers locked here. Um, we can basically take our tooling, because the, the way that we've set this up is that uh, we've established that this is sort of a spoil component. Uh, so we don't cut into the edges of the table or accidentally run off the, the mill here. But we can destroy this. This is usually made out of cheap stock uh, that's left over from other people's cutting. And so if we look at this, we can come over here and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Uh, we can see that we're or oriented uh, specifically on the geometry. Now I've taken a piece of mic uh, sorry, a micrometer to actually establish what the thickness of the stock is, in fact. Uh, and so I know that it's 1.38 inches thick, uh, almost exactly um, 1 and 3 eighths. Uh, and so what we're going to be doing here is then I've located how deep I want the pattern uh, that's going to be cut in here. And so I can start to locate um, exactly how I want to establish all that for the surfacing. Okay. Uh, and so we have now our curves located. If we go into our section view, we can just take this geometry uh, and it's essentially ready to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get onto a different layer and we can lock that because we obviously don't need that geometry in there. Um, but this is ready to take into Mastercam. And so you can see here I've done some pocketing tools and, and set myself up here with the surfacing so that I can see all this. But everything is existing. The thing to note here is 
uh, everything exists above the zero of the z-axis, exactly where it's supposed to exist in space. So when it sits on the bed of the machine, that's going to the top of the surface is going to be exactly 1.38 inches above that surface. And so as it starts to run these tool paths, uh, all of the cuts and, and all of that are going to be uh, very keenly placed uh, so that they are going to be relative to the where the machine works. Now, uh, if you're using the machine at ball state, uh, what we're going to be looking at is uh, for the thermoid, this is the zero, zero, zero point. It works uh, literally in translation with that. Uh, the shop bot there works, I believe, in the opposite fashion. Uh, or this is the zero 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 point. Um, but suffice to say, that there's a control box up here, and, uh, and if you locate your stuff in the uh, far right upper right hand corner um, of the uh, quadrant one, what you can do is you can obviously um, you'll be closer to it as you're controlling the machine. So it gives you a little bit more control um, over how the the machine will mill because there's obviously all the control dials there. All right, uh, what we can do from there is once we we obviously have this. Uh, 10 foot by 60 inch uh, or 120 inch by uh, 60 inch guy set up with a 3 inch offset. Uh, we can select our geometry and we're going to export that. Uh, the next tutorial is going to go through and, and show you guys how to set stuff up uh, actually running through Mastercam. We're going to uh, generate an IGES file and we're going to just call this table demo. Okay, uh, and under the drop down, uh, there's it's usually going to be set to default if you never use this, but if you scroll down through here, there's Mastercam and Mastercam 10. Um, we have Mastercam, this is Mastercam 10 X2 uh, something uh, version of this, but this will work um, in, ter in the terms of the version here. Now, what we're going to do, we really shouldn't have to do anything other than that. This is basically just setting up the geometry so that it should be importable. Right, and it's warning me because I, I exported my dimension information too, which is not relevant. I wasn't going to cut that anyways. All right, uh, that's it.